Hi, my name is Phil. I'd like to talk about politics, and in this video, I'd like to run down the eight questions that Keir Starmer of Labour and Ian Blackford of the Scottish Nationalist Party asked Boris Johnson during Prime Minister's questions during Armistice Day yesterday, in which he was shown up over the huge job losses that have now been shown to be caused by his delay to the job support scheme, the huge waste of public money to dodgy COVID contracts, and of course, the very real human cost to his delay to apply COVID restrictions. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, new microphone set up. How is it? I might have to keep playing with it. Hopefully this one is now fine. But um, questions first of all. So Keir Starmer started off on what, what would be quite a soft one. It was one that Boris Johnson would be only too delighted to answer because it came with a follow-up. But even that was not aimed at Boris Johnson. Keir Starmer's questioning is now following a pattern, but let's go it first of all. So all of the leaders commented on various things. There's been very important events this week, uh, but Keir Starmer was noting that on Armistice Day, Mark, it, um, he asked about recovery centres, for example, for veterans. And he asked if the Prime Minister will make sure that charities that help out veterans will have the support that they need. Nice easy one, Boris Johnson simply had to stand up and absolutely agree, and the right honourable gentleman is quite right to bring this point up. And then I absolutely encourage people to make online donations where they can, uh, which is fine, absolutely fine. Of course, and this is a feature of this year, we keep being reminded and we should be reminded that although you know charities are a good thing in many ways, what they actually represent is a failure of government because it shouldn't be for charities to have to look after our veterans. It should be the government who does that. And if they don't quite have enough money for it, the people of Britain are quite happy to pay more taxes as long as those taxes have been spent sensibly. But Starmer then stood up and he thanked the Prime Minister for his answer. <laughs> he should do. It's the first answer he's given in half a year. But he noted that the Chancellor had given insufficient money to support veterans, but could find, for example, it was very topical in the news this week, £650,000 for PR consultants. And he said that's just the tip of the iceberg. He said new research is suggesting that the government has spent this year alone £130 million on PR companies. Now, I'm going to say straight away there, if you need to spend £130 million as a government on PR companies, that sounds like the sort of money we should just hire your own staff, quite frankly. You can sort of understand subcontracting something out for a very specialised uh, you know, area. That much, you can afford your own staff. But, but Stan wasn't going to. He said, is that a reasonable use of public money? Again, not too searching at the moment, but I'm going to go through after a few questions exactly what he's getting at here. So the Prime Minister then tried to go on the attack. He said, I, I, I think he's referring to the vaccine task force. Johnson thought he had this. Um, he said, Starmer should be paying tribute because they've now secured us supplies of this viable vaccine. But the thing is, I'm thinking, I'm not, at this point, I'm not sure how many of those PR companies did that. With the PR companies going out looking for vaccines? I don't think so. I don't think they had any hand in that. Uh, but what Johnson said is that the, the, the PR was to raise awareness of vaccines. Because, of course, nobody knows what a vaccine is in the middle of a global pandemic. It's not like it's splashed all over the headlines in the newspapers and all over the media and all over social media. I think people know what a vaccine is. And he said it's to fight the anti-vaxxers. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've been noticing a lot, a, a lot less of the anti-vaxxer movement this year. Oh, wait. No, the opposite. The opposite. And he says, to, tr and to try and persuade people to take part in trials. Now, I would at this point ask, what evidence does he have that they were struggling to find people prepared to take part in those trials? Because there's been a lot of support for these trials. There's been a lot of people interested. Anti-vaxxers are absolutely a thing in this country. I mean, Dr. Wakefield was a British doctor who kicked off an awful lot of it. It exists. Um, but I have seen no evidence that this PR group has actually reduced their impact. And, and the vast majority, the overwhelming majority of people in this country look forward to the COVID vaccine. That's why if you look at the mainstream media, 
and there's a whole range of views in the mainstream media. None of them are, are, are calling into question the vaccine. They're all hyping it up. Some of them more than they should be. But all of the reporting is very positive. The only negative reporting you'll see is on little echo chambers somewhere hiding in the dark recesses of Facebook and worse places. So then Starmer then stood up, he said, look, you know, we're not attacking individuals here. 130 million pounds, 130 million quid. He says, there's a real question of accountability here. He's pointing out there the contracts being given without any sort of process. He says, I don't, I know the prime minister doesn't like that referring to accountability. He says, but this isn't the prime minister's money. This is the taxpayer's money and they expect us to spend it wisely. He said, let me give you an example. He said, earlier this year, the government gave 150 million pounds to Iundal Capital to deliver face masks. He said, how many usable face masks, is distinguishing here, because there's some, now, some of the equipment that we've ordered via these companies has arrived and it's not been a problem, but quite a lot of it hasn't, or if anything's arrived at all, it's not been the right stuff. The government got into trouble over that. So he's careful here. Don't you give me any, oh, well, this stuff arrived. If it arrived and it wasn't what it was supposed to be, it didn't arrive, did it? What we ordered didn't arrive. So he said, how many usable face masks were provided to NHS frontline staff under this contract? To which Johnson just got a waffle, 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 waffle. Um, and the thing is, he kept going on about the private sector, or oh, we need the private sector for this, 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 they make the PP and stuff like that. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. I, I'm a socialist, but I'm not calling for there to be a nationalised factory for PPE. I, there are certain things that need nationalising because the private sector doesn't deliver, but there are certain things it absolutely delivers on. There's no problem with the design of it and the, the manufacture of it. I have no problem with public money going to PPE producers. In fact, we were all screaming out for it when the pandemic first hit. Nobody's having a pop at any PPE producer, not one. The money is being wasted, not by PPE producers, not by giving it to the wrong PPE producers, particularly in this country, but the companies who are procuring those supplies. There's no answer to why procur procurement, sorry, I hate that word, has to be done privately. Why? Why does it? Why can't the Department of Health source these things? They've got the staff to do this. And if they haven't, hire some. Because they should be doing that pandemic or not. That's their job, isn't it? To make sure our healthcare system works. And, and you know, and he said it's the, the private sector that provides the vaccines and scientific breakthroughs. Is it? That's not what you were saying a bit ago, Prime Minister. Funded with government money, isn't it, a lot of these things? Sometimes just genuinely, you know, pharmaceutical companies, of course, entirely source their own things. And then sometimes they do it with government money by universities. But the fact is that on this particular point, I go, it's a bit funny how Boris Johnson, you know, a few months ago, was boasting about all the public investment he was throwing in towards vaccine development, which, by the way, I supported. And now he wants to say it's all down to the private sector. Well, how can it be down to the private sector if it's using public money? Well, it's not, isn't it? Public money. Anyway, Starmer, so look, his question, remember, was how many usable face masks did we get? We didn't really get an answer to that one. Starmer stood up and he said, the answer's none. He just completely blanked all the waffles. He said, the answer's none. Not a single face mask. I suppose Starmer was thinking, well, do you know what? I'm sick of this now. If the Prime Minister's not going to answer questions at Prime Minister's questions, somebody should probably do it. I'll answer for him. And he said that this wasn't an isolated example. And he gave a further example, Randox, another company in the news. It's been given a huge contract. Now, this was the same company, he said, that messed up royally this year when it had to recall hundreds of thousands of COVID tests because they were potentially unsafe. He said on safety grounds. I remember the story at the time. Uh, it's because they couldn't guarantee their safety. Now, and then Star said, look, contrast the way that this government sprays money at companies who don't deliver and its reluctance to provide long-term supports to businesses and working people at the sharp end of this crisis. And then he said, again, this is where this pattern's emerging. The Chancellor spent months saying that extending furlough wasn't what workers or businesses need, only to U-turn at the last minute. Now, this is the second time in that 
PMQs yesterday that Starmer has fired both barrels at the Chancellor. He's done that a bit before and he was really going for it today. It's following a pattern. Basically, Keir Starmer's job, leader of the opposition, is to, to show up uh, the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister must be exposed as incompetent. You might argue it shouldn't be that difficult. Well, he did win a general election, unfortunately. And sure, Starmer is still pulling Johnson's pants down every week. It must get a bit boring for him. But he's now gunning for Sunak. Because Sunak is the man believed to be most likely to take over next year. Boris Johnson is gone. Keep pressure up on him, of course. Don't ever let that loose. But it's, he's gone. He's just not, they don't want him gone yet. They want him gone in spring. Or before summer at any rate. And, uh, but now, so now he's getting early in on the Chancellor. And then Starmer pointed out, he says, this failure of policy is clear with the record number of redundancies up in the last quarter. And that's last quarter, remember. So some people may say, well, you know, this pandemic, it's, it's unprecedented. Of course, it's going to really hit the economy hard. It's hitting the economy hard everywhere. This is the last quarter. If it was just COVID, it would have hit worse or at least as bad in the first quarter when we, when we got it, first of all, and lots of businesses couldn't cope. It's the end of the furlough scheme because the government did act during the first lockdown. The furlough scheme saved an awful lot of jobs. Absolutely. You know, the government adopted socialist policies and it saved a lot of jobs. We applauded them for it. Great. There were gaps in it. John Whitwell Starmer's going to come to. There were gaps in it, but it worked. The problem here is for this last quarter, what happened in this last quarter that was different, is the government kept insisting that the furlough scheme would be ending on October the 31st. They kept insisting that for months they insisted on it as it was getting to the point where we were still, we were in, in the throes of the second wave, they were still insisting on it. So what do businesses do? They go, well, we can't manage. And they filled out their redundancy notices. You know, the fact that it ended up being extended didn't help because it, it wasn't even a last minute decision. Starmer was actually quite charitable calling it a last minute decision. It wasn't, it was a later than last minute decision. So then Starmer said, look, what's the prime minister's message to those who have lost their jobs because of the Chancellor's delay. Again, both barrels on the Chancellor. No, under normal circumstances, even if it is the Chancellor's, you would focus everything on the Prime Minister. Your, your opponent is the Prime Minister. You let your shadow Chancellor deal with the Chancellor, which she does. But Starmer is now going, right, I'm treating Sunak as basically the leader of the party opposite me. That's what he's doing. Uh, Johnson then stood up and he says, look, you know, the, the furlough programme has continued throughout this pandemic. How is it really? Two things. First of all, no, it hasn't. It's ended. It actually did end on October the 31st, like they said it would. It was restarted a few days later, about a week later. So there was a period where, although some job support existed, it's not like there was no job support, but it wasn't furlough. It wasn't anywhere near as good as that. And it missed out an awful lot of people. The furlough scheme did not exist for, a, a, even if it's just a short period of time, it's a period of time where people just lost their jobs. Um, and the second thing is, again, it actually made no difference even if it was seamless, the extension, because they didn't announce the extension until after it had ended, actually. But even if it had been at the same time, it wasn't extended, um, it wasn't announced the extension far enough ahead for the redundancies to be stopped. The problem was that businesses were told for months and months and months, you've got until October the 31st and then it's that's it, you're on your own. If you want to pay your staff to sit at home, that's up to you. Um, and of course, those businesses made their business decisions based on believing what the government said. Yes, I know. But I mean, what choice did they have? And, and then Johnson said, we should be very proud of the way we've looked after the entire population. Oh, oh, we've looked after the entire population, have we? Have we? So how come people have lost their jobs then? Aren't they part of the population? Hmm. Then Starmer stood up and said, look, the Prime Minister must know that because furlough was not extended until the last minute, there is in being charitable, lots of jobs were lost. And he says the figures tell a different story. 181,000 redundancies in the last quarter, record high. 780,000 off the payroll since March. People are paying the mistakes for the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, getting that in again, he's going at it. Again, bringing Sunak into it, very, very good. Because my great fear, and I've said this before, is for the Conservatives to get rid of Boris Johnson and then the new guy comes in with a clean slate. 
Um, and that's just going to happen. That's why the Conservatives are so ruthless with their leaders. Um, if you're an electoral liability, they get rid of you, get the new guy in with a clean slate, clean hands. What Labour need to do is to try and make sure that the blood of Johnson's government is on Sunak's hands from day one when he takes, if he takes over. We don't know it would be him taking over, but at the moment he is the favourite. Um, and then Starmer said, look, if we, if the government had given contracts to companies who could deliver, public money would have been saved. If they'd extended furlough sooner, jobs would have been saved. And if they'd brought in a circuit breaker when the science said so, lives would have been saved. And he said, let me deal with another mistake. Boris Johnson at this point is just... Mm. <laughs> I half expected Starmer to pick up the mace and give Johnson a whack around the head with it. Human rights lawyer is not going to do that. Um, and then he said, look, the Chancellor repeatedly failed to close gaps in the support for the self-employed, which is absolutely true. I mean, this was a, a problem. There was a huge delay on the self-employed getting anything at all. When Sunak announced his uh, furlough scheme uh, to great fanfare during the first lockdown, well received, but like self-employed were going, uh, what about us? Oh, we'll get round to you in a bit. Took quite a while. And there's quite a lot of self-employed people got nothing, never did get anything. And, and they're still missing out now. Uh, this is the problem. And so Starmer said, look, it's bad enough. It was bad enough in March, but this is seven months on. And he said that the, he quoted the Institute for Fiscal Studies saying that it remains a wasteful and badly targeted system for the self-employed. And he said, so what, why is the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, keeping him in it, still failing our self-employed? Which is also a really good line to take. Quite a lot of the self-employed believe themselves rightly or wrongly, uh, to be better off under a Conservative government. Uh, I'm not sure that thinking is really hitting home. It's often thought, you know, the Conservatives like to build themselves as the party of small business. The, the reason they think they're the party of small business is because they are not at all the party of the worker. It's like, you know, it's almost like they're saying, well, do you know what? We treat workers so badly, you are actually better off getting your own business. But you know, they're not. They are, they're not even the party of big business. They are the party of the big business owner. Um, but anyway, of course, Johnson just got up on his waffle, says, well, you know, COVID is bad. We've done everything we can. It's like, well, you... And again, I wish Starmer had said this for his last one, because you know what? Starmer's sixth question, he don't get a response to it anyway. I'd have just said, you know what, look, if, this, if you've done everything you can and it's this bad, why don't you step aside for someone who can do better, eh? Why not do that? He didn't, unfortunately. I wish he had. But anyway, um, then he tried saying that, oh, he, he, you know, he attacked universal credit during the general election and now he champions it. No, he doesn't. But I'll get to that with Ian Blackford's question because there's another one that's the same thing. Uh, so then Starmer, for his sixth one, which he knows he gets no comeback for, he said, look, the Prime Minister just doesn't get it. <clears throat> he said... He knows the government have extended their support because Johnson's just going on about extending the furlough. Yeah, I know you've extended it, but that support doesn't apply to millions of self-employed people in the country. It says they've been left out for seven months. And he gave an example of a photographer who spoke to him on a radio phone in about how his industry has been devastated. He said, look, what's the prime minister to say to this photographer? To which Johnson stood up, he gave the most, even for him, a really patronising answer. So what I would say to Chris, which is the name of the photographer, is the best way to get his business back is to just carry on down the path we're on now. You mean the path that's devastated his industry? The, 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 it, it, and he plugged the pandemic guidance. It's like, yeah, I mean, Chris may well be following all this guidance. It's not helping his business, is it? He's knackered, not earning. Is he joking now? Is he actually joking? Because people who are affected by this need to listen to these answers and they need to remember them come the next general election and they need to remember it's not just Boris Johnson. Everyone in government is part of this because I didn't hear any cons mem conservative ministers standing up and saying, we're not doing enough for these people because they're not. And if, they're, if they don't think, if they think they're doing enough, it's not going to get any better, is it? 
But then that was, you know, that was the end of that. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Ian Blackford, I'll do this really quickly because actually Ian Blackford didn't ask anything different to, to Starmer on this occasion. Uh, he went with his usual line, which is related to job support, of course. But, um, uh, and he got the same answers. So the first one, Ian Blackford again mentioned the huge unemployment crisis. Uh, and he, he again said, look, the Chancellor's U-turn came too late. And, and that he had warned about this for a long time, which is absolutely true. Ian Blackford has been banging this drum for an awful long time. Um, and he said, will the Prime Minister at least commit now to permanent uplift in the universal credit? So what, basically what's happened, universal credit is an absolutely dreadful system, which Boris Johnson is now trying to claim that everyone is in favour for. No, they're not. Um, it's horrendous a system. But with large amounts of, even if it's temporary unemployment, the last thing Boris Johnson wants to do is to allow Tory voters to see what it's like being on universal credit. So he bunged it up a bit. He increased it a little bit. As soon as it's only the, the really poor on it again, he'll lower it back down. And Ian Blackford knows this. Everyone knows this. So he's committed. He's asking Boris Johnson to commit to keeping the uplift permanent. Why would you just increase it now? Keep it there permanently. And uh, then Prime Minister, he just pulled the same trick they did with Starmer by saying, well, he's now glad that Ian Blackford supports universal credit. But like with Starmer, he doesn't support it. But he knows it's what we have with the Tory government. He's got no chance of getting Boris Johnson to replace the system with something better, like, you know, the thing that came before it. In fact, what the SNP have been calling for is some proper rollout of a universal income system of some description. That's what they are supporting officially, as far as I can understand it. But, you know, they know that that's the system you get with the Tory government. So he's asking, well, You've given us this piece of crap. Could you at least make it a little bit better? Maybe polish the turd a little bit. And then, so Ian Blackford stood up. He said, look, you know, and he pointed out how ridiculous it is that Prime Minister's questions, the Prime Minister does not answer the questions. Um, but then he said, look, another group left behind, and again, Echo Starmer's point, uh, uh, the self-employed. He talks about the millions left behind of government support. And he says, when will he finally fix gaps in the support scheme? Of course, more blather. Like I said, it's the same question that was asked by Starmer. It gets the same response, um, which is sod the lot of them, basically. We're not going to do anything else. And there we go. Uh, Prime Minister's questions again. Hope you found it interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.